Let that be your prayer tonight. Ask the Lord to light up the fires. Light up the fires. Say, Lord, light up the fires. Light up the fires. Father, this is my prayer tonight. I'm asking you to send in more fire, God. Send in more fire, Lord. Send in more fire, Lord. Father, I send more fire to every house of prayer. I'm sending in more fire to every minister of the gospel. I'm sending more fire to every person connected to this prayer altar. It's not by accident. It's by divine appointment. Receive more fires on your altar. Receive more fires on your prayer rooms. Receive more fire on your prayer life. Receive more fire on your worship life. Receive more fire receive more fire receive more fire receive more fire lord send in the coals let the seraphims come and begin to drop fiery blazing hot coals upon our altars let us burn as the menorah let us burn as a brazen altar let us burn with purifying fire with the fire of the holy one let the fire of the holy one burn in me burn in my mind burn in my soul burn in my prayer life burn in my messages burn in my worship life let the fire of the holy one burn in me come on that's your prayer tonight say lord burn in me lord burn in me set me on fire for you god set me on fire for you lord that the things of the lord become burning coals in my spirit it's like a fire shut up in my bones that's your prayer tonight say lord let your fire burn in me let your fire burn in me if you if you pray that prayer i can guarantee you the fire is going to begin to ignite in you so bright let your fire burn in me let your fire burn in me lord let your fire burn in me let your fire burn in me burn in me burn in my mind burn in my heart burn in my spirit let your fire burn in me let the fire of the holy one burn in me father this is my prayer again tonight lord i'm praying that you awaken messengers all around the earth for you said that this is the year of the messenger and lord you're sending messengers out into the wilderness just as you sent in john the baptist he was a voice crying out in the wilderness and you sent him to prepare the way for King Yeshua to come and so too in this final hour you are raising up the messengers of the end times this is my prayer tonight raise up messengers like John the Baptist send them out Lord send them out into the wilderness let them be the voices crying out in the wilderness preparing the way for Yeshua to come raise up your messengers Lord raise up messengers all around the earth God father give messengers a boldness in their heart and a boldness in their spirit that they will understand it's not about their audience how many people are listening who is watching who is sharing who is liking but it's about the message it's about the awakening it's about that trumpet in their voice to sound an alarm lord raise up messengers raise up messengers in every corner of the earth raise up messengers out of every church raise up messengers out of every denomination let the messengers arise wake up the messengers god in this last days let the messengers arise let the messengers come forth I pray right now for every messenger under the sound of my voice every dreamer every end time minister seer prophet I pray for you right now and I release an anointing upon your life you will not be silenced your voice will not be silenced I speak an anointing on your life I raise up the messengers God raise up the messengers God raise up the John the Baptist this God the ones who are anointed to cry in the wilderness raise them up God let the anointing come upon them let your fire fall let your wind blow I speak to messengers in the realms of the spirit and I say this is your hour and this is 
your moment to open your mouth as a trumpet and begin to sound the alarm. Do not be afraid of the faces of men. Open your mouth and begin to sound the alarm. Begin to blow that shofar in Zion for the day of the Lord is at hand. Let your voices be heard. Let the word of the Lord come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. I clear the atmosphere for messengers of truth. I clear the atmosphere for messengers of righteousness. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Take your positions on the walls and sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. And so Father, right now I just release that anointing upon messengers of truth to wake up and to begin to sound an alarm. Just as you sent John the Baptist ahead of Jesus' coming and John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus, so too messengers will arise. I see messengers from every part of the world waking up. I see messengers arising and beginning to take their places on the walls, on the mountain tops. I see messengers blowing that shofar, sounding an alarm in the spirit, waking up others. Father, let this anointing be released tonight. This anointing that we walk in. Father, that same anointing that is on my life for dreams, visions, end time revelations. Let this anointing be imparted, Lord. Let this anointing be imparted to the watchman community here tonight. Let this anointing be imparted upon every son and daughter connected. Let this anointing be imparted to every pastor that is connected and wants to sound an alarm in this last day. Let this same anointing for the mysteries of the kingdom be revealed and released on their life. Receive that anointing. This is a powerful anointing. This is a powerful anointing. It's an anointing for dreams, visions, and understanding end time revelations. It's an anointing to be able to unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Receive that anointing on your life. There's no qualifications that you need to walk in this anointing except love for the Lord and obedience to his word. Receive that anointing. Receive that anointing. Receive that anointing. I want to pray one more prayer. One more prayer and then I'm bringing to you a powerful revelation that the Lord revealed to me. Let's pray one more prayer. I want us to pray for the fire the fire walls to be ignited all around us so we're going to pray this prayer because as end time watchmen end time messengers we can come under great attack the devil does not like messengers of god and so as messengers you belong to this watchman community and i have been feeling I have been feeling your travail. I have been feeling your pains. I have been feeling your battles. The battle is not easy. The enemy is trying to wear out the saints. But guess what? Our Lord Yeshua have already overcome. And he has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever we bind on earth, it's already bound in the heavens. And whatever we loose on this earth, it shall be loosed in the heavens. And so we have already been given the victory and the keys. So let's pray this prayer. We're going to say, oh Lord, let your fire walls be ignited all around me and my family and my properties. Let's pray that prayer. Lord, oh Lord, let your fire walls be ignited all around me all around my family and all around my property lord ignite your firewalls let the walls of fire be ignited light up the firewalls god i light up the firewalls god all around me all around me let the walls of fire blaze let the walls of fire blaze around mariah around kaylee let the walls of fire blaze around every pastor every minister of the world harvest prayer tower let the walls of fire blaze over every 
prayer partner, every friend of our ministry, every person connected to this prayer altar. Let the walls of fire blaze, Lord. Let your fire blaze. I light up the fire walls. I light up the fire walls. Wherever there were breaches in the walls, I stop the breaches. I close up the hedges. I close up the breaches. I shut it down. Every portal that may have been open, I shut it down. Every gate that may have been open, I seal it in the realms of the spirit. And I light up the fire walls around your life. I light up the fire walls around your homes. I light up the fire walls around your property, around your vehicles, around your business around the, your workplace, on your job, around your desk, around your cubicle, around your secular job, that chair that you sit in on your job. I light up the fire walls around it. Walls of fire. Walls of fire. Rebeke sata kayata nabaka sata. Walls of fire. Walls of fire. I see so many seraphim angels just lighting up fires. Coals of fires is being dropped. I light up the fire walls. Lord, I light up the fire walls tonight. I light up the fire. I light up the fire. I light up the fire. I light up the fire tonight, Lord. I light up the fire. Let the fire blaze tonight, Lord. Let the fire walls blaze tonight. Let the fire walls blaze. I'm seeing so many walls of fire just lighting up. There were breaches, there were breaches, but we're blocking the breaches. Block the breaches. Father, we stop the breaches, we seal up the breach with fire. I seal up the breaches with fire. You will not be touched, you will not be hurt, you will not be harmed. I seal up the breaches with fire. I seal up the hedges with fire. Fire, Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. I seal up the hedges with fire. Holy Ghost and fire. We seal up the hedges with fire tonight, Lord. We seal it up with fire. We seal up your entrances with Holy Ghost and fire. I seal your front doors with Holy Ghost and fire. Your back doors with Holy Ghost and fire. I seal on top your roofs with Holy Ghost and fire. The vehicles that you drive, Holy Ghost and Fire. 236 Cedar Hill Road, Trinidad. I send Holy Ghost and Fire to the, to the church property, the front door, the back door, the entrance, the driveway. I release a mighty warring angel with a sword of flaming fire on top the roof. In the mighty name of Jesus, I send in the anointing. I send the fire of God to 236 Cedar Hill Road, Trinidad. I send the fire of God. Let the fire blaze. Let the fire blaze. Let the fire blaze. Let the angels of the Lord fight our battles. The angels of the Lord will fight your battles in this hour. I want you to never take things for granted. Whenever you see something funny in the, in, the, in the natural, pray, destroy the powers of darkness. Always remember there are no coincidences in the spirit. When you're dealing with spiritual warfare, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Pray, pray. You got to pray, beloved. Pray. Sometimes the enemy makes a mistake. And when he makes a mistake, when there's a glitch in his system, things appear as though it's a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's a breach in the matrix. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I sense victory. Hallelujah. I sense the victory of God in this place. I sense victory. Victory, 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 victory for you. Victory for your loved ones. Victory for your families. Victory over your health. Victory over your prayer rooms. Victory on every side. Victory on your jobs. Victory in your finances. I just sense the victory of God. Victory has come. I announce victory over your life. Victory 
over your destiny. You're walking into a season of complete victory. Victory, victory. Hey, Rebecca Sata. I sense the victory of God in this place. Victory. Thank you, Lord, for your victory. Well, saints of God, God bless you. You are welcome. This is Prayer Mountain, and I am Anna Edwards. And welcome to the community of watchmen, seers, prophets, gatekeepers, and intercessors on the walls of prayer. We love watching for the return of our Lord Yeshua around here. This is an awesome community of watchmen. So if you're here for the first time, we love you. God bless you. Stay with us. If you're watching the replay, you are welcome uh, to hear about the prophetic revelations and end time happenings around the world. To everyone that's back again with me, shalom, welcome, blessings. I call you blessed tonight. I call you favored tonight. I call you prosperous tonight. You are the beloved of God. The seal of God is on your life and it cannot be denied. Big hugs to everyone. Why don't you send someone big hugs? Let's see all the big hugs. Let's see all the hearts. Send us some hearts tonight. I'm just making sure I've got the right group. Good. That's right, Janice. I received those hugs. Thank you. Big hugs to everyone. Blessings to you, Shanti. Blessings to you, Pastor Merlin, Diane. Welcome. Big hugs to everyone. Prophetess Gems, big hugs. Hannah, big hugs. Gail, big hugs to everyone. Love and likes and hearts and shares. Blessings, man of God. A great man of God is with us. Bishop Dr. Gary George and Prophetess Agnes George, big hugs to you, sir. We love you. Thank you for your prayer. Big hugs, blessings to everyone. Chandra, we love you. And to everyone connected with us tonight, we love you. Big hugs to you and your families. I'm telling you, I want you to be uplifted. I want you to be blessed. I want you to feel special and feel encouraged and uplifted tonight big hugs minister listra we love you jennifer we love you juliet new york is in the house we love you florida is with us our louisiana house of prayer is with us blessings to everyone so tonight i'm talking about a galaxy wide cosmic war big hugs auntie glennis big hugs to you and spencer big hugs to john and patricia i receive it thank you big hugs laura ann and ramona we've got some great people in the house myrtle big hugs to you isaiah we love you blessings so tonight i'm talking about a galaxy wide cosmic war is coming I'm talking about the impending invasion. I'm talking about the imminent rapture. The rapture is imminent, people. You better get ready. It's almost time to go up and to meet the Lord in the air, and you better get ready. The world may be preparing for war, but as I always say, the saints are preparing for a wedding. The day of the Lord is at hand, and it's a good thing. This is good for the saints. It means we're going up. We're going up to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So listen to this. I've got a lot to say, and I want to get this revelation out to you on tonight. We're talking about a galaxy-wide cosmic war. Uh, preparing for an impending invasion and the imminent rapture uh, of the church okay so why don't we begin by reading the word of god revelation chapter 12 7 to 9 we're talking about a war and the war that uh started in heaven between satan against god and between satan fighting against the angel armies of heaven that is where the real war is happening that's where it all started so what you see happening in the earth right now uh between you between russia and ukraine it's very saddening our heart goes out to them we are praying for the families of ukraine every day and we're also praying for russia to have a change of heart to stop the attacks but there is a bigger war that's happening 
and there is a a whole lot of um, um, things that is happening from the cosmos that I want to talk about tonight. So let's go to the word of God, Revelation chapter 12, 7 to 9. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and they prevailed not. Neither was there any place found any more in heaven for the dragon, which is Satan. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, so we are going to begin there. We see where there was a great war in the heavens, because of course, Lucifer, uh, the light bearer, the archangel of God, the one who walked, a walk, uh, walked amongst the stones of fire in heaven, he rose up in rebellion against God, the creator, and um, God was not going to have that, and God kicked him out of heaven. So from since the beginning of time, you see where a great war have been happening. Long before you and I were even born, a great war was happening in the cosmos. So the war happening between Russia and Ukraine right now, uh, this is just the trigger to a greater war that is to come upon the face of the earth. Many, uh, many people that are watching this war and um, scholars and end time prophecy experts, they are saying for us to pray that this war uh, stops because if it continues, it can very well lead to something greater, something bigger. It can very well lead to World War III. And of course, if World War III was to happen or even be triggered, uh, that's going to bring great devastation uh, on the earth to many nations, uh, to many people. And um, the whole world is going to basically shut down and be affected by World War III. And we, we know that we wouldn't be here because the Lord promised that he would uh, redeem the church and rapture us out uh, of this world before that begins to happen. All right. So how many people remember my previous Prayer Mountain um, talks, giving you the final seven year countdown and talking about 2022 to 2029 and uh, letting you know that a new seven year cycle is beginning in the month of September and many end time prophecy experts are saying this is looking like it could be uh, the seven years uh, for the tribulation, right? So we talked about that and um, we know very well the tribulation is about to begin very, very soon. The tribulation represents seven years of great devastation on the earth. However, the Lord has promised that the Ecclesia, the Bride of Christ, will not be here. All right. So when we see these things happening, we ought to understand that the king is at the door and he's getting ready to close out the church age. It is not the end of the world just yet. It's just the end of the church age, meaning that the saints of God are getting ready to evacuate the earth so that Satan can take up his rulership for seven years legally and the judgments of God can be poured out. So, uh, when you see these things happening and you're thinking, well, I wonder what's going to happen. Just read the book of Matthew chapter 24. We already know what's going to happen. All right. During those seven years, we have talked about it. We have, um, you know, st been studying the word of God. So we know what's going to happen and we believe the church will not be here. So on February the 2nd, 2022, I, I gave you uh, some prophetic insights. I had a revelation where I saw an intergalactic military council of some kind arriving on earth. That happened on February the 2nd, 2022, where the Lord took me up in a vision and I saw uh, some kind of intergalactic mil military council arriving on earth. And I said in the prophecy, it's a written prophecy that I released right here on this channel. And I told you that they came to trigger the plans for the final seven year uh, tribulation period. 
So I released this prophecy on February the 2nd, 2022. And remember I told you the Lord had asked me to sound an alarm every night for 21 nights. And so we began blowing the shofar every night for 21 nights. Now when that prophecy was revealed on February the 2nd, on February the 24th, war broke out in Ukraine. All right? So the alarm that the Lord sent, the 21 nights of sounding the shofar, that alarm was in fact um, directly sent from the Holy Spirit to prepare the world. Um, I think I said a storm is coming and uh, it was an imminent worldwide alert. Asking the people of the world to wake up and to prepare themselves. All right, so we have seen now where war have broken out in Ukraine and we are going to continue to pray for that nation. However, the Lord wants us to prepare ourselves for the great wedding banquet in heaven. So you got to be looking up, okay? So the war that you see going on in Ukraine right now is being directly controlled by highly intelligent fallen angels. They are eagerly setting the stage for a full-blown extraterrestrial invasion. Now, I wrote that and I want you to know that when we talk about extraterrestrial uh, creatures, you and I know we're talking about like fallen angels, we're talking about all those demonic creatures, when Satan was kicked out of heaven with one third of the angels, he fell on the earth, he was sent to the earth, and he has a whole army of um, demonized, hybrid demons ready to invade earth, to come back to fight, uh, this, to fight against God. So spiritual war has been going on between Satan and God long before you and I were born. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden to learn why Satan, the serpent, he even had the ability to be in the garden. Does anyone, has anyone ever thought about that? If God created Adam and Eve, and set them in this beautiful garden full of peace, full of abundance, full of prosperity, right? Then why in the world was Satan in that garden? I want you to think about that. I'm going to be giving you all the revelations now, but just think about it. It's a garden. In the book of Genesis, it's the Garden of Eden. It's got every single herb-bearing tree. It's got all things for life and godliness, for prosperity, for Adam and Eve to live a prosperous life and a good life, to rule, reign, and dominate. So how in the world was Satan allowed to be in that garden? So we're going to go back to the story of Genesis. So I wrote something here for you. Long before the Garden of Eden, Satan was cast out to the earth with one third of the angels. I give you the portion of scripture. World history shows us where Satan fell to the earth, he began a cosmic war against God and the angel armies of heaven. He started to wage war against Michael and against Gabriel and against all of the good angels that stayed in heaven to defend the kingdom of God. So there was a whole cosmic war going on in the heavenlies. Satan, Lucifer, did not like the fact that he was kicked out from his position in heaven. He was kicked out from his rulership in heaven. He was kicked out from his territory in heaven and sent to the earth. So now, the fact that Satan and one third of his angels were sent to the earth 
earth technically became his territory because he lost his heavenly dominion he lost his place in heaven but God had to put him somewhere and so in the book of Revelation 12 7 to 9 it tells us where the Lord sent him he was removed or banished from living in heaven or having his abode and his dominion and authority in heaven and he was sent to the earth so the earth kind of became his place of rulership his his territory per se all right so i'm going to read revelations 12 7 to 9 once more so you can see where he was sent and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought back with his angels and they prevailed not neither was there any place found any more for him in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil who deceived the whole world he was cast into the earth where was he cast out into the earth where was he cast out when he was banished from heaven into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so to some extent he was cast down to the earth and uh, he was given some kind of legality to be on the earth we don't understand it all however this is why the bible calls him the god of this world because he he received some sort of legality to come down to earth and to live on earth or whatever so he's now the god of the earth all right so 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 god the creator probably thought that okay we we have gotten rid of of the wicked one out of heaven let's send him to earth let's get let's get him out of our kingdom and let's send him to the kingdom of earth let, let him go down there there's not much he, he could really do on earth with a third of all these wicked creatures all these fallen angels so that was plan number one to send him to earth and that's what happened but that plan did not really work out well so I'm going to show you now uh, a mystery that the Lord revealed to me of what happened when Satan uh, was banished from heaven and sent to earth. Remember, that plan did not work out well. Even on earth, he began to make real, real trouble on earth. When Lucifer, the fallen archangel, was sent uh, to earth with one third of his angels, he met, I wrote something here, he met other earthlings already living on earth because planet earth was already occupied with God's creation. So there was already a civilization living on earth. This is before the time of Adam and Eve. There was civilization living on earth. It's probably not human beings like Adam and Eve. It was some other kind of civilization uh, created by God the Father living on earth. Because planet earth was created long, millions of years before Adam and Eve was even set on the planet. So there was another kind of civilization living on earth, planet earth. All right. So when he was cast down to the earth... He was supposed to just be on earth and probably just take it easy. That was, that was like his prison, his prison sentence. However, because sin had already entered into his heart uh, and he wanted to wage war, further war against Michael, Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel, this is what he did. He stirred up rebellion even on earth and he began to cross. Now these are some prophetic mysteries I'm showing you. I'm going to give you evidence after the broadcast, okay? So just work with me. It's just prophetic revelations. Prophetic insights and revelations never really have all the, all the evidences. 
and this is why it's a revelation it's a mystery being revealed so this is what I began to write as I began to study this about this about the earthlings that were living on earth before the time of Adam and Eve Satan wanted an army of demonic demonized soldiers to fight against uh, God and his angelic armies and so Satan crossbred the earthlings with the with the blood of demons he crossbred these earthlings with with the blood of these demonized fallen angels that came down with him and he created an army of reptilian soldiers fighter fighter soldiers let's call them that he created for himself an army of reptilian fighter soldiers half half human half reptile all right and so he has this entire army of reptilian um military defense working with him all right working with him ready to wage war and so he began to wage war against um, the heavenlies and so the war in the cosmos continued there was great battle in the cosmos with Lucifer and his army of reptilian fighter soldiers or fighter demons and the fallen angels now the fallen angels are not the reptil reptilian soldier soldier demons the fallen angels are beautiful like lucifer they, they they have the appearance of beauty because they are angels and they came down they were kicked out with all the glory on them still satan still has his glory on him so when so we are talking about a different division of military satanic military defense I'm, I'm talking about a division of military defense that the Lord revealed to me. All right? So this is why I told you, this is just a prophetic revelation and something that the Lord revealed to me. So Satan had, he crossbred and contaminated the, the, the earthlings that was living on planet Earth, transforming them into some kind of army of reptilian fighter soldier demons and they began fighting and waging even more war in the heavens so there was great war going on in the heavens fighting and warring and great battle was happening the good angels fighting against lucifer fighting against these repto reptilian soldier demons and there was war there was war in the cosmos there was war in the heavens all right so listen to this listen to this what does god do does god just did god just leave lucifer on planet earth with his army of reptilian demons to to begin to continue to torment the whole universe to torment the planets did god do that god did not do that do you know what was the second punishment there for Lucifer? God then kicked off Satan off of the earth along with his reptilian army, banishing them to outer space planets. So God realized, okay, Lucifer, you, you have no behavior in heaven, so I sent you to the earth. Now I sent you to the earth, you're transforming the earthlings into rep reptiles, and you've programmed them to kill and you have no common sense at all on earth so i'm going to banish you off the earth and so god banished lucifer off of the earth sending him to planets to other planets and he banished all the reptilian armies and cast them into outer darkness which is like outer space and all those different kinds of planets out there are now inhabited by demonic creatures, fallen angels, 
and Lucifer. And this is how you find Lucifer's kingdom in the second heavens. You understand? So there is even a planet called Planet X, which the scientists and the um, astronauts and stuff have recently discovered a few years ago. A planet called Planet X. Nobody seems to know where Planet X came out of. Planet X is just there and it's a planet that it's, it's in darkness and uh, it can exist on its own and creates minerals and all of that. But, but it's just a mysterious planet and the astronauts are saying this planet can very well be inhabited by extraterrestrial uh, beings. Now I'm telling you what the extraterrestrial beings are. It's that whole reptilian army that Lucifer created. Uh, some of the fallen angels are there. Some of these um, demons uh, from Satan's army were banished to under the earth. Some of them were banished in the sea, under the sea. Some of them were banished uh, in dark places right and chained under the earth until the day of judgment and so the lord just totally banished lucifer off of the earth banished his demons off of the earth sent banish them to the but to the bottom of the ocean under the earth he chained some of those demons and sent and scattered the rest across the across the whole wide cosmic universe and so now you have lucifer and his millions and millions of armies of demonic angels sold their demons living in the second heavens inciting war and waging war against earth so i'm gonna i'm gonna come back now to why uh satan hates hates the earth so much this is why lucifer hates uh, human beings he hated Adam and Eve when they were created he hates any child of God who is uh, in the image and likeness of God he hates humanity with a passion and this is why he wants to come back to reclaim earth as his territory because he once had it and because of his wickedness and sinful nature he lost it he lost it he lost it all and so i want to i want to tell you something now this is the prayer mountain and this is prophetic insights and revelations i pray that you are understanding so i want to tell you this the reason and agenda the reason and agenda of Lucifer and his highly intelligent interdimensional beings aka fallen angels the reason and agenda of Lucifer and his fallen angels coming to earth to manipulate human beings is because there is a war going on in the galaxy over territorial control over planet Earth. All right? There is a war going on in the galaxy for territorial control over planet Earth. And this is why God the Creator is going to hand the earth over to lucifer for seven years of rulership because for whatever reason whatever reason in the divine council of heaven with the heavenly beings whatever reason whatever verdict came out of the heavenly court case concerning satan against god concerning control over planet earth whatever the reason whatever the uh whatever the judgment was in the divine council in heaven the council ruled in the favor that lucifer should be given rulership of earth for seven years that is the council that is the ruling of the divine council of heaven that he should be given earth for seven years to legally rule planet earth that that ruling is established 
by the divine counsel in heaven and it cannot be reversed and this is why God cannot reverse that ruling Satan must be given rulership over earth for seven years okay so there is a, a war going on in the cosmos right now there are there is war going on for territorial control of not only planet earth but territorial control of other planets because there are many other planets out there in outer darkness that these uh, fallen angels were banished to they were banished to many of these other planets and they live there that's their territory but of course there is always some internal wars going on and great conflict is going on out there but the greatest prized possession for Lucifer is planet Earth because he once was given territorial control or dominion over planet Earth that's before the time of Adam and Eve he played the fool and he lost it and now let's go back to Adam and Eve and now the Lord after Lucifer and the army of reptilian demons were created and they were just fighting fighting in the in the cosmos creating great chaos amongst the gods in heavens and all of that he was banished off of planet earth and now the Lord cleansed planet earth of all these demons and all these evil spirits and all these evil beings after the earth was cleansed the earth rested and then God started a whole new creation of humans this time the Lord said let us make man in our own image and likeness Thus, God created Adam and Eve. And God crowned us with glory. God crowned us with beauty. God crowned us with everything that would make us just as he is. In his image and his likeness. I wrote something here. God created this new creation of man of human beings he created us to be an army of glory carriers and so now an army of glory carriers was created on planet earth beginning with adam and eve and the lord set adam and eve in the garden and the purpose of Adam and Eve was to recreate and to create a whole new bloodline of human beings to be sons and daughters of Elohim. All right? Of course, you know how that story goes. Lucifer did not stay where he was banished in the outer world and in the planets and all those other places that he was sent he had access to earth still because that was once his dominion and once his territory and can you imagine the hatred the hatred that Lucifer felt towards Adam and Eve when he realized that he lost his dominion and the dominion that he once held and once had was now given over to Adam and Eve. Can you imagine the hatred, the utter hatred that he felt towards Adam and Eve? And so do you know what? Being the deceiver that he is and being the evil one that he is, he came to Eve and he spoke to Eve. Now in the Bible, Eve was not afraid of the serpent do you know why because lucifer was already there in the garden long before her walking around he had he still had access to earth so he was able to be in the garden move around 
and I believe there were also other beings, other fallen angels still would visit earth from time to time from those outer planets wherever they were banished they still had access to come down and to walk around because Eve was not afraid of him Eve was not intimidated by him which tells us that Eve Adam and Eve were also moving around talking with the other gods in the garden from time to time there was no fear on them so Eve was not afraid when the serpent came the serpent, when Lucifer came to her and he said, did God really say that you cannot eat of the tree that is in the midst of the garden? That's not true, Eve. She responded to him and she spoke back to him, right? She spoke back to him because there was no fear in her because they were walking around. Um, those gods, those fallen gods were always walking around and visiting earth from outer space so she was not afraid to speak to him there was no fear in her and she listened to what he said and uh, she ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and uh, she she allowed adam to eat it and the minute that she ate it her eyes were open and she began to realize that um there she was naked so the glory that the lord had put on them uh, she fell from grace uh, Adam and Eve fell from glory Adam and Eve lost dominion Adam and Eve lost legality they lost the power they lost uh, all the controls that they had and uh, Satan stole it so it was stolen from them by Satan and um, that was his master plan to take it back that's that was his master plan so he stole it and he took it back from them but we know we all know how that story goes uh, Yeshua our Lord he came to the earth God the Father sent Yeshua to the earth to die on the cross and through the death and resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach through his blood uh, he redeemed all the blessings back to the sons and daughters of God to the shed blood of Jesus Christ uh, we we were now brought back into immortality so after death we no longer are gonna just die and rot away we can have eternal life in heaven uh, Yeshua's blood bro brought back all our prosperity gave he gave us back dominion he gave us back power he gave us back our glory through the blood of Yeshua he gave us back rulership over the devil and his serpents and so we can trample upon snakes and scorpions and by nothing by any means will hurt us all this was brought back through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach our Lord all right but there's a there's a uh, there's a way that you regain your dominion and that's by accepting Jesus the Messiah into your heart as your Lord and Savior and that's how you enter into the covenant of sons and daughters if a person on the earth does not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and ask him to come into their heart cleanse them of sin and is regenerated then that person uh, remains in the world and part of the world and part of um, under Satan's control so when the rapture happens when the rapture happens beloved it is only the sons and daughters of the Mashiach will be going up everyone else that uh, has not entered into the blood covenant of Jesus Christ will remain on earth when the rapture happens it is only the sons and daughters of the Mashiach will be going up the sons and daughters that are regenerated uh, through the power of the blood we will be going up so the rapture is imminent the rapture is coming it is at hand the day of the Lord is at hand now listen to this I want to give you some more when the rapture takes place we are going up but Lucifer and his army of reptilian demons are coming down I want you to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight when the rapture takes place and the saints of God are redeemed of this earth 
Lucifer and his, his army of reptilian demons are coming down. And they're going to be coming down to this earth to take up legality over earth for seven years to rule and reign. And it's going to be hell on earth. Now for the first three and a half years, the Bible tells us that it's going to be a type of false peace. So I believe in the first three and a half years, people, pe the, the humans on earth may not be seeing um, the demons. They would not be seeing the, rep the reptilian fighter demons. They would not be seeing winged creatures flying around because the first three years, the first three and a half years, the Bible says it's going to be a type of false peace. But right in the middle, right after that period, the Bible tells us that Satan is going to deceive Israel. He's going to set up himself as a God in their temple. And then all hell is going to break out. At that point in time is when I believe that the reptilian demons, the, the half human, half reptile demons are going to manifest themselves clearly for all to see. So now you're going to find when the rapture takes place and the church goes up, those reptilian demons that came down, they're going to begin manifesting themselves. There's going to be great pandemonium on earth. Every kind of evil demonic creature that was banished to the second heavens, it's coming down to earth. And they're going to begin waging war against human beings because they hate human beings with a passion. Their job is to kill. They are programmed to kill. So there's going to be a killing spree. It's going to be like the worst video game of killing that you've ever seen. So there's going to be, Lucifer is going to be ruling. I believe that the Pentagon is going to, is going to, have, is going to declare martial, martial law. We all know that martial law is going to be happening. Everyone will be required to get some sort of microchip indicating the, the mark of the beast, bringing them into, plugging them into the celestial kingdom. There's going to be fallen gods walking the earth. There's going to be interdimensional beings walking the earth. We know they're fallen angels and we can say now that they are going to be the reptilian army so there's going to be like a reptilian army walking the earth uh, killing human beings you're going to have zombies walking the earth we talked about this where human beings are automatically going to begin changing their dna and their bloodline because of the mixing the mixing of the demonic gene with the human blood there's so so the human being is going to begin to change and their body is going to begin to become demon they're going to take on the char characteristics of a demon. Their faces are going to look very demonized. Their skin is going to become uh, very scaly, uh, such as a uh, crocodile skin. And they're going to become uh, walking zombies, eating the flesh of other human beings. Not to mention winged creatures. There's going to be a lot of demonic birds coming out of the second heaven. There's going to be all sorts of mythological creatures coming down manifesting itself literally on the earth because earth will no longer be earth as you know it it's going to be pandemonium remember world war three would have been taking place and as world war three takes place all buildings everything is going to be crumbling breaking down look at ukraine you see how beautiful ukraine was today and then tomorrow everything is torn down everything is blown up everything is blackness all around the trees are going to be dying there's going to be asteroids falling from heaven burning up the earth there's going to be all sorts of tsunamis the asteroids that fall into the ocean is going to cause tsunamis people are going to be drowning there's going to be food shortages everywhere it's going to be every man for themselves there's going to be all sorts of war it's going to be pandemonium human beings are going to have to be running not only from the reptilian demons not only from zombies human beings that are left behind they're going to have to be running from their local government because every Every government will sign allegiance to the celestial kingdom and to the celestial ruler, the Antichrist, 
who will be indwelled by Satan. The Bible says the Antichrist will be indwelled by Satan, by Lucifer himself. And so human beings that are left behind on the earth, they're going to have to run for their life. They're going to have to take cover in the mountains. They're going to have to flee to the forest, wherever they can hide. But I'm telling you, they will not be able to hide for long because the demons are going to be everywhere. The reptilian army is going to be behind them. Imagine you're a human being and you're running from some sort of half human, half crocodile demon. You're running from sort of some sort of big winged demonic bird is after you. You cannot run anywhere. You cannot hide anywhere. The Bible says men will long for death. They will cry for death and they will not be able to die. Death will flee from men. This is what is going to happen during the time of the tribulation and this is why we are warning the world. This is why we are telling men and women to wake up, repent from sin and sinful lifestyle. Come to the Lord while time may be found so that you can be counted worthy to escape all these things that are coming. People are not listening. People are laughing. People are scoffing. People are still wanting to live how they want, do what they want because nobody believes the prophet anymore. Nobody believes. Nobody is listening to the preachers of righteousness anymore. This is why we are warning the world to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to put your house in order. It's time to repent. This is why we are warning you, beloved. It's going to be the worst kind of torment and torture that the world has ever seen. Lucifer is going to be given those seven years of legality to rule the earth. The divine council in heaven have already ruled it. They have agreed on it. It is written in the word of God that he will be ruling this earth for seven years. And so God has made a way of escape for every person. For every person living on the earth, there is a way of escape. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, through accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, there is a way of escape. All you have to do is pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart, to cleanse you, to wash you of all sin and sinful lifestyles and live for the Lord. Obey his word. Keep watching. Keep praying. Keep your eyes. Keep looking up, beloved. Time is at hand. This is why we are warning the world to wake up. Humanity was never designed to live on planet earth with demons. But if it's demons they like, then it's demons they will get. Because many people have chosen Lucifer. Many people are worshipping him. Many people are worshipping the fallen gods. Many people are worshipping the gods of the sea. Many people on earth are worshipping the gods of the forest. Many people are worshipping the idols, worshipping mammon. They are worshipping the gods of thunder and the gods of light and all these different gods, the gods of the sun. Many people are worshipping these fallen angels and calling them God and calling them Lord. And so God cannot, he cannot redeem a person such as this if they do not repent. So if it's the fallen gods that the world wants, then it's the fallen gods they will get for seven years. And then they are going to realize that they have made a great mistake worshiping the lesser when they should have been worshiping the creator. The creator God, Yahweh, the one who created it all. The one who created the universe and the planets and the cosmos. The one who created the earth and created us in his image and likeness. He crowned us with glory. He crowned us with beauty. It is. It was never God's intention for Satan to deceive Adam and Eve, but it happened. It happened. We weren't there before the time of Adam and Eve, but I tried my best tonight to give you a little demonstration, a little prophetic insight about how it was. And that's just a small prophetic insight that the Lord gave to me. When we get to heaven and we begin to hear of the stories of creation, it's going to blow our minds. And so right now, I just want us all to really begin to surrender our hearts to the Lord, surrender our mind to the Lord, surrender our will to the Lord. Beloved, the time of the church age is closing. Time is almost up. The world is not yet coming to an end. But the time of the church age is coming to an end. 
the army of glory carriers were getting ready to leave this earth and you better be sure that you're part of that army because the Lord does not want any man to perish. The Lord does not want any of any one of us to be left behind. There's a seat at the marriage supper of the Lamb with your name on it. I just want you to tell someone that tonight. Let's encourage someone. There's a seat. I believe there's a seat at the marriage supper of the Lamb with your name on it. And you better do everything possible in your power to preserve and to keep that seat through the blood of Yeshua. I don't know about you, beloved, but I'm not going to be staying behind with any reptilian demons. I was born for the palace, and it's the palace I will be. I want to close us off right now with Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 to 44. Matthew 24. What does the Bible tell us? Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour that your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would have come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man is coming. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made him ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find him doing so. Father, even now, I just thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word and the prophetic insight and revelation that have come to us to give us an understanding of this worldwide cosmic war that is happening right now and that is coming to planet Earth. I thank you, mighty God, that you have made a way of escape for all the sons and daughters of God that we will not be here. Lord, I pray right now for every person listening to this broadcast that does not know you as their lord and savior i pray for their souls i pray for their souls i pray for the souls of sons and daughters i pray for the souls of backsliders i pray for the souls of nieces and nephews aunties and uncles i pray for the souls of our neighbors i pray for the souls of our enemies persons that do not like us for no reason i pray for their souls today i pray for the souls of every person lukewarm christians unbelievers idol worshipers lord i pray for the souls of men and women that they will open their hearts to the gospel and that they will repent and return while time remains i pray for the souls of men and women around the world to repent and return while time remains i pray for the souls of every person under the sound of my voice that you will continue to prepare our hearts for the great day of the lord is at hand I bless every person under the sound of my voice. I bless you. I seal your destiny in the blood of the Messiah. I seal your prayer life in the blood of the Messiah. I seal your houses of prayer in the blood of the Messiah. And I decree and declare you will be an effective witness. You will be an effective witness in these last days. The Lord will keep you under the blood. I speak that over your life. The Lord will keep you covered under the blood. The Lord will keep your household covered under the blood. You will not be hurt and you will not be harmed in this season. The Lord will save your families. I speak that over your life. The Lord will save your household. The Lord hears and answers the prayer of the righteous. The Lord will save your household. I decree and I declare over your life. The Lord will save your household. I bless you. And I call you blessed in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Well, the Lord richly bless you. I'm going to wash this word and seal this word in the blood of the Messiah tonight. I send the blood over your lives tonight and over your families. 
you are covered in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach and so shall it ever be. Amen. The Lord bless you everyone. Thank you everyone for your prayers. Shalom. Thank you.